Yo, what's up, guys? So today I'm gonna to be showing you seven steps on how you can edit like Sam Colder in iMovie. So firstly, I just want to say that this is iMovie, and this is not the program that Sam Colder uses to edit his videos. He uses Adobe Premiere and After Effects, so it's not going to be the same. But I try to do my best to make it seem similar with the edits and just appearance overall of how he makes his videos look. So the first step in this process is the font. Sam Colder uses a font that at the beginning of all of his videos, you've probably seen it all over the internet, and this font's called Surfing Capital. It kind of looks like a bunch of dots and this brush stroke thing. It's a really cool font and you can find it at thefont.com if you don't have it. It's super easy to download and if you don't know how to add it into your custom font selection for iMovie, I actually have a whole tutorial on that for any font you want. So just check that out. I'll leave the link in the description below. And then to add it in iMovie, all you have to do is open up your project, bring in your footage or whatever you want to have it over or maybe just a black screen and then click on titles, drag in the title you want and then type in what you want, then drop down the menu where you can see all the different fonts. Go down to show fonts, and then you can see where all your fonts are and just search up the custom font that you want. So using Surfing Capital, and then check that. Uh, just a quick note on this, sometimes when you're doing this, there will be like this little circle checked and this could means like a stroke or something or shadow in iMovie, I'm not exactly sure. But if it's clicked, it'll turn the the font black so just make sure it's unchecked just a few more things to note about this too you don't really have a lot of options to move your titles around in iMovie except for what they give you but there is an app on the iPhone called legend which allows you to type in different text and animate them different ways and you can save it as a video and upload it or send it through airdrop to your computer and use it the only problem with that is you don't have surfing capital you have the fonts that they give you which is kind of limited but it still looks pretty cool if you want to a fancier title and kind of want to create your own style. The next step is to find a song that's going to match your video. Usually if you watch a lot of Sam Colder's videos, they're pretty tropical, upbeat songs. Um, and you want to make sure that your song matches the kind of overarching idea or theme of your, of your clips. As far as where I get all my songs, I usually use YouTube. I can go on No Copyright Sounds and there's a lot of, of great songs there that you can use for free and that you won't get copyrighted for on YouTube. Sometimes I use uh, a couple other YouTube channels and just see what songs I like and then I go buy them. Um, but there are restrictions, so just be careful about that. And if you really wanna find a bunch of songs and just have them all there without having to go search around, you can look up available sound libraries online. Like they have some places where you can go online and get subscriptions for that and pay and get licenses for these songs that you can use in your videos. And as far as editing goes to music, after you've found your song, I usually like to cut on the beat and do it in creative ways. But I have a full tutorial on this as well. I will leave a link in the description below if you guys want to find out how I edit my videos to songs and where to cut and what to do. The third step in this process would be probably motion and how you edit your clips. It's important to notice when you're making these edits and cuts that your clips kind of match so everything flows. It's not enough to just cut right on the beat. And if you watch a lot of Sam Colder's videos, you'll notice that he has lots of similar clips that kind of lead into one another, even if he's not doing these fancy transitions. He really pays attention to what's going on in one clip and what's going to go on in the next clip. So it's important that if you have stuff moving one direction, in the next clip you want to have it moving the same direction so it all appears like it's flowing. Unless you want to create some sort of dissonance or kind of stopped feeling in the, in the video. But for Sam Colder, he usually has a lot of flowing, continuous stuff. Now the fourth step, and probably the step that I'll get the most questions on, is Sam Colder transitions. Now again, talking about this, this is iMovie, so you are pretty much limited to the basic transitions that they give you. But there are a little bit of things that you can do to make it appear a little bit more professional than what's in there. So the first transition would be the slide transitions. Um, so there is a transition in iMovie called the slide transition. It depends on which direction you want to go. You can either slide left or right, but either one works. And all you have to do for this is find the clips that you want to slide between and put the transition and drag it in between the two clips. Then if you double click on the little icon for the transition, you'll notice that it has an option to change the duration. For all these transitions, I usually try to make them kind of fast because it makes it less obvious that it's an iMovie transition that's really kind of simple. And so I try to put the time down to the, uh, the fastest it can go, so 0.2 seconds. This makes it a little bit more blurry and fast, and so the eye can't really catch up and it doesn't really know what's going on, so it looks like it's sliding. 
some things that you can do to make this effect more powerful, um, and this goes for any of the transitions that I'll talk about in this, is the Ken Burns crop effect. Um, usually you use this on photos and you see it's if you import a photo it kind of looks like it's moving. You can use this effect in your clips by cutting at a location where you think you want the effect to start because you don't really have a lot of control over how the duration of the Ken Burns. And all you have to do is click your start crop, whether you want it to be full screen or a little bit less than that, and your end crop. And you can move this around and manipulate it, but wherever your end crop will be, will basically be how your clip looks at the end. And so if you start at a full frame and move in, it'll kind of look like you're zooming in almost, but not really. So it's an artificial zoom technique. And you can also do this for sliding. If you make your frame a little bit smaller and you start over to the left, and then you move into the right, it'll look like it's doing a little bit of slide. So that way when your slide transition comes in, it looks like it was all just one movement and it keeps going and it, it smooths together nicely. Now talking about the zoom transition, there's this thing called a cross zoom, which kind of zooms in but has this weird motion where it moves left to right and that kind of throws it off. So to fix this, I usually put the transition in between both clips and then put the duration of it down to 0.2 seconds again. So it looks kind of blurry and goes by fast. Then I usually, if I'm doing this in iMovie, I try to find two clips where it's sort of similar or it's believable that it's zooming in. So from a drone shot to a lower level shot or from something far away, something close. That's how it's gonna work the best. It's gonna look the best for these kind of things. So just keep that in mind. But after that, I will also use the Ken Burns effect starting with my frame at full and then at some point making it a little bit smaller so that way over a little bit of time it looks like it's zooming 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 and then the cross zoom happens and it looks like you really zoomed in to the next clip and lastly the other transition that i think is really popular with sam colder videos that you can sort of do in imovie um, is called the speed ramping transitions so say for example you film something in frame and you have a lot of extra movement out of your camera or you just want to merge two clips together and you don't really know how to do it and a transition is not going to work I'd say try using the speed ramp transition, which basically all you have to do for this is cut your clips where you want the effect, the transition to start. And you start making your clips get a little bit faster and faster and faster until at the end you make them go really fast so you can't see what's going on. And you, you end the clip at a very high speed and then you begin the next clip at a very high speed as well and then drop it down to regular speed or slow speed. So it kind of looks like everything ramped up, sped up, and then came back down and you can't really see what happens in between so it looks like it was all just one clip that you just moved around in. It helps better if you have like extra footage in your camera where you're not really in frame or anything and you just have a bunch of random shots and you can just speed ramp through these so it looks like something's going on, you can't really see what's happening and then it jumps right in the next clip. It's a very effective transition, Sam Kohler does it all the time in his videos so you should definitely try it out. So number five out of the seven steps is color grading. Again, I have a tutorial on this fully explaining what color grading is and how to use it in iMovie. The link will be in the description below. All these links will be in the description below if you want to check that out. Step number six is uh, sound design. It can be as simple as sounds that just whoosh sounds in between your transitions to ambient sounds in the background. If you watch Taylor Cut Films or Sam Cole or any of those people, you'll notice that in all their clips they have maybe sounds of birds or oceans going on and then when the transition comes in they have whoosh sounds. These are extremely important in selling the effects in your transitions and just making the viewer feel like they're actually there instead of just watching it on a screen. If you're wondering where I get my sounds, I have a subscription to this online service called Splice. You pay $8 a month for it. I use it mostly because I make music as well and it has lots of music instrument samples that I can use for that but it also has lots of ambient sound packs, transition effects, stuff like that. But if you don't want to pay for that you can go to YouTube there's tons of sounds and channels there that you can find downloads for and finally step number seven is adding cinematic black bars this step is super easy to do and I'll leave a link in the description below for a download that's already set to 1920 by 1080p unless you shoot in 4k I try to leave a, a link for that as well but all you have to do for this is drag it in over your footage as an overlay. And then all you have to do for is click the crop option to make sure it's set to fit and it won't move as long as it's a PNG file. The link I'll use for you guys is gonna be a PNG so you shouldn't have any problems. So just to review what we talked about, I'd say the most important things to take away from this video that will really make your videos look more professional and like Sam Calder will be the motion that you use in your clips, how you cut to the music, the kind of music that you use, and sound design color grading, 
fonts, all that other stuff, transitions. They're nice and they will make your videos look like Sam Colders, but they may not be as good um, and they're kind of gimmicky. So it's not that great to rely on them, especially in a program like iMovie, which doesn't do it that well and can also make your footage look a little more amateur than you would think. So just make sure that your story and all the other stuff is key when you're thinking about doing all these other steps. Anyway, that's it for this tutorial of the day, guys. I hope to help you out. If you have any questions about these steps or anything else that Sam Colder does in his videos that I didn't mention, make sure to leave it in the comments down below or anything else you want me to cover. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like it and then subscribe to this channel. That's gonna be it for me today. So I will see you guys in the next tutorial and talk to you then. All right, peace.